Welcome to Microsoft Access Developer Level 37, brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's class, we're going to work with custom list box columns. Now, we're going to build a form where it's going to be based on any table you want. We'll start with the customer table. You'll be able to specify in the customer table field properties which fields you want to see on this form. So first name, last name, email, and so on. Then the user, once they open up the form, can pick which fields they want to see, and those will be displayed in a list box. Lots of cool stuff you can do with this one. We'll learn some new stuff, including working with query defs, things we haven't done yet in the developer classes. So this one's going to be a lot of fun. I know I had a lot of fun recording it. This class, of course, follows Access Developer 36. I strongly recommend you've taken all the previous classes, especially you might want to review Developer 15 and 16, where I cover multi-select list boxes and record sets. Very important lessons to have before taking this class. And of course, you know my saying, don't skip levels. My lessons are designed to be taken one after the other in order. So each one might build on the topics from the previous classes. I'll be using Access 365. It's currently 2022, so it's roughly equivalent to Access 2021. The topics covered in today's class should work just fine going back to about 2007. And of course, if you have any questions about the material covered in today's class, just scroll down and post them right there in the form you see at the bottom of the page. If you have any questions about stuff that's covered in other classes or just general Access questions, uh, you can post them in the Access forum. And, of course, be sure to visit my Tech Help page. This is my kind of, sort of, almost daily video podcast about access where I answer questions sent in to me by the students. All the cool questions get answered here. Okay, let's take a look at exactly what's covered in this class. In Lesson 1, we're going to build a form with custom list box columns. In other words, we'll have a list of customers in a list box and a list of fields on the right. And based on what the user selects in those checkboxes, that will determine which fields are displayed in the list box. In lesson two, we're continuing to work with the custom list box columns form. We're going to replace those checkboxes with a multi-select list box. Now we've done multi-select list boxes before in developer 15. We're going to review them a little bit here and we're going to see how this is much easier to maintain in the long run and it looks better. It's a more elegant solution than a whole bunch of checkboxes. In lesson three, we're going to start moving away from having all of the fields listed in our VB code. It's a lot harder to maintain and upgrade that. Instead, I want to store that information in the table itself, in the table's properties. Okay, so we're going to learn how to use the table defs collection, the fields collection, the field properties collection. We're going to loop through all the fields in a table, and then we're going to load the field list based on the properties we're going to set in the table, which will determine the fields that we want to have listed, their widths, whether they're selected when the form loads, and lots more. In lesson four, we're going to replace our reQuery list with generic code. In other words, it's going to ignore the field list completely, and as long as you've got that table property set up, it will work with any field in the table. Then we'll see how to resize the form so that if you want to make it wider or taller, it'll resize the list of the widths accordingly and it'll move our little field list over to the right as well. In lesson five, we're gonna make some custom labels to go across the top of each of the columns so we can see what the column has in it, right? We'll make a bunch of blank labels and then using our code, we'll position them properly on the screen. We'll have to do some inches to twips conversion. I'll tell you what that is in just a few minutes. We'll set the width of the label and its other properties based on the data in our list box already. We know how wide each column is, so that can tell us where to place each label. In lesson six, we're still working with this custom list box form. We're going to see how we can prevent those labels from going too far to the right, and we'll deal with a quirk with the horizontal scroll bar that pops up. Then we're going to see how we can change the table that's in this form. So we could pick the customer table or the order table right, and have the data in here change based on which table we pick. In lesson seven, we're going to wrap up by learning something new, query defs. We haven't done query defs yet in any of our developer classes. I just checked. <laughs> we're going to add queries to the form. Now, query defs are very similar to table defs, which we've done, but you got to handle them a little bit differently. Then we're going to deal with missing that ID field, right? If the user doesn't put an ID field in their table or query, 
then we have to be able to process that differently and disable the double click event.